Hello everybody, this is a tutorial on how to use Anki to succeed in medical school and on your boards. This video is specifically geared towards first year medical students who are just starting out and want to learn more about Anki, what it is, and how to use it. But no matter where you are in your medical school career, if you want to learn more about Anki, then this video is for you. Okay, so first off, what is Anki? Well, in basic terms, Anki is a flashcard software. It's available for download as an app on PC, Android, and Mac. And it uses one account to sync across all platforms, so you can use any device to work on your flashcards. And what makes Anki different from other flashcard apps? Well, the biggest thing, in my opinion, is Anki uses spaced repetition. Which, if you're not familiar with what spaced repetition is, it's a learning technique to retain information uh, for long periods of time. And Anki uses this as an algorithm to tell you which cards to review on a particular day. And we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the video. Um, another thing about Anki is it is highly customizable, which can be a bad thing uh, in itself in that Anki is so highly customizable that it can be a little bit overwhelming, a little bit daunting to use at first. And among the people who tried Anki and say they did not like it, uh, the number one reason I believe that they cite is that it's just too confusing to use. Um, and this video is designed to um, hopefully help you guys navigate that and uh, get around that uh, first period of confusion. Okay, so another thing that Anki allows for is not only can you make cards uh, to study with, but you can share those cards with other people and those people can share their cards with you. And what this has allowed for is the creation of large pre-made decks available for download on the internet for study for step one, step two, um, and step three of the boards and for medical school in particular. And what's so great about this is you don't have to make all of your cards. There are cards out there over the material that you are learning and they're all ready made for you. Okay, so let's talk about some pros and cons of Anki. So some other pros we've already talked about, um, the pre-made decks that are available, they've been proven to work over time, they've been available for years, they've been improved and added on to, uh, and they've just been shown to work. Um, also, Anki is free for download. The software is free for download on your computer. The pre-made decks are all free for download off of the internet, uh, with the one exception being uh, if you're going to be using Anki on mobile app uh, and you have an iPad or an iPhone, um, it will cost from the App Store to download Anki. But if you're using Android devices, then everything will be absolutely free. Okay, so what are some downsides to Anki? Well, first and foremost, you must commit every single day to reviewing your flashcards. And this is very important. If you do not review your cards every single day, Anki will not work. And the reason being is we've already talked about spaced repetition and the algorithm that Anki uses to give you cards each day that you need to review. And if you do not review cards when Anki tells you you need to review them, then that algorithm will not work. Okay, And the cards will simply build up and you will have a backlog of cards to get to and that's not how Anki is meant to be used. So if you are going to give Anki a try, I would just ask that you give it an honest try and you commit every single day to doing flashcards, however many Anki tells you that you have to do that day. Now whether or not it's Christmas, your birthday, summer break, every single day you have to do your cards. Okay, so it is a commitment, um, but I believe it will be worth it. Worth it. The algorithm will work to your benefit, 
as long as you trust Anki and do the cards that it tells you to do every day. Um, another con is Anki can be a little time consuming, and I debated on whether or not to list that as a con because Anki is a way to study. And just like any other form of studying, studying is time consuming. Um, but getting started with Anki will be time consuming. There will be days where you will have hundreds of cards due that you have to review. And that will take some time. And if you're not used to studying with flashcards, it can seem a little scary to spend hours a day studying flashcards. But just remember that you are studying. You are studying for your tests. So that is not time wasted. Um, in fact, I believe it is time well used. And over time, I believe it will save you time in the long run uh, because of spaced repetition, because of the way the algorithm works. You will retain this information in the long term. And in year two, in your dedicated time, when you're studying for step one, you will have retained that information better in the long run. And it will save you time from reviewing that information again. Okay, and last but certainly not least in the cons list, Anki can be confusing to operate. We've already talked about that. Okay, so... We've been mentioning spaced repetition, but for those of you who do not know what spaced repetition is, I want to talk just a little bit about that. So spaced repetition is based on this idea of the forgetting curve. And the way that works is, say you learn something at a certain point in time, uh, time zero on this chart, you will, in theory, retain 100% of that knowledge because you just learned it. Okay, and then as time progresses, your retention of that material will drop. You will lose a certain percentage of that information. Um, you will forget some of that information. And as time progresses, your forgetting will follow a curve. Um, the example in this diagram is you will forget 20% of that information in the first day. And where space repetition comes in is it's this idea that if you review that information on day one, you will bring your retention back up to 100% because you just reviewed that information, um, such as with Anki, with Active Recall. You've reviewed it. You've brought your, inform your information retention back up to 100%. And now you will again follow the forgetting curve. But if you notice, this time, this curve, it's not quite as steep as the first one. In fact, in this example they give, you lose 20% now over two days' time, not one day. Okay, and then if you review again, you bring yourself back up to 100%. Now this time, this curve, it's a little bit flatter as well. And in this example, you're now losing 20% over three days' time. So all you're doing is you're flattening your forgetting curve over time, and you're retaining the information in the long run. Spaced repetition is an evidence-based learning technique. It has been proven to work, okay? And Anki uses that in its algorithm to tell you which cards you need to review. You'll learn a card on the first day, and you'll review it again in some short amount of time. Usually the next day you'll review that card. And then it'll spread the card out a little bit further, but you will review it again, and a little bit further, and you will review it again. And that is exactly how Anki works. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more about the pre-made decks that I mentioned before. There are many to choose from. They're all available for free to download off of the internet. And most of these decks are based off of resources that medical students use to learn and to study for step one. So, for example, Sketchy, Boards and Beyond, Pathoma, First Aid, um, many of the textbooks that you will use for your classes. These cards have been made and based off of those resources. And each one of these decks will contain tens of thousands of cards, um, depending on which one you download. But these were created by medical students, and they're used by medical students all across the country, all across the world, to study for their tests, 
to study for their boards, and they've been shown to work, okay? There is anecdotal evidence and testimonials available. You can read about them online. There are many people who used these decks, and they used them like they were supposed to. They reviewed their material every time Anki told them to review it, and they did well on their boards, okay? And like I said, they are all free to download. Okay, so if you're still interested in using Anki, we will go ahead and get started, and I will walk you through how to do that. So first, we're going to want to download the Anki software on our computer. Um, I did mention that you can use Anki on your mobile device, but let's hold off on that for now. Um, to get started with Anki, you will need a computer. The mobile app will come later when you're ready to start reviewing and learning cards. But for getting started with Anki, we need to use our computer. And to do that, you will go to this web address that I have listed here, apps.ankiweb.net. Um, you can type that into your search bar, or you can just go to Google and type in Anki download. Um, it will be pretty easy to find. You will open up their site and follow the instructions to download Anki. It's very simple. Um, and once you've done that, you will open up the Anki app on your desktop and it will prompt you to set up a web account. This allows you to sync your device, sync your cards and your progress among multiple devices. And we will download the mobile app. Um, you can go ahead and do that now if you'd like, uh, but just hold off on using that until we can get everything set up on your PC first. Um, and like I mentioned, as of the recording of this video, uh, if you're shopping in the Apple App Store, it is $24.99 to download, uh, and it is free for download on Android. Now, this is optional. You do not need a mobile device to use Anki. You can do everything from the computer. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, download it if you would like. Okay, so now that we have Anki downloaded onto our computer, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about add-ons. So now that you have Anki downloaded on your computer, what you have is the basic software. And add-ons, um, like the name implies, are available from Anki to add on specific settings and options um, to your Anki app uh, to allow for different features. Now, I personally used three add-ons which I felt were essential to using Anki um, with the decks available online uh, for medical school. Now there are many, many more add-ons than this and if you're interested in learning about them there are other videos on YouTube that you can watch um, on King in specific. Uh, he has many videos available on add-ons that he used. Um, he goes a lot more in depth than I do. So if you're interested in learning about those, uh, go over to his channel, watch some of his videos. Um, but for this video in particular, I will recommend three add-ons for download. Um, and I will walk you through how to get those and how to download them to your app. Um, so I have a web address listed here. Um, you can also type in Anki add-ons and it will be pretty easy to find. And I have instructions on how to download these and I will walk you through how to download them now as well. Okay, so here we are on the website that I linked in the previous slide. These are all the add-ons available from Anki. As you can see, like I mentioned, there are many, many to choose from. But for now, we are going to stick with the three that I recommended. And the first one you see here is Hierarchical Tags. That is one that I used and recommend. So we are going to click on it 
you can see there's a little bit of description here from Anki about what it is. Uh, you can read about that if you'd like. Um, but to download, go ahead and find this code and you will copy and paste it into the Anki software. And I'll show you how to do that now. So here we are um, in Anki. And you will look up here in the top left corner where it says Tools. Click on that. Go to Add-ons. And as you can see, here are the three add-ons that I recommended. I already have them downloaded um, in my app. But what you're going to want to do now that you've copied that code, click on Get Add-ons, paste here in the text box, and click OK. I'm not going to do that since my add-ons are already downloaded, but you can go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now that we have our add-ons downloaded into Anki, the next step uh, will be to download the decks that you are going to use. As I mentioned before, these are all free for download online, and they're all available on Reddit. Uh, specifically, you want to look for the Medical School Anki subreddit. I have the web address listed here, so you want to go ahead and go to that site. Okay, and here we are on Reddit, on the Medical School Anki subreddit. Go ahead and click on the wiki page. And you'll want to scroll down until you find Anki decks. And here are all the decks listed. Uh, it starts with step one deck, which is what we will want to talk about now. As you can see, there are many decks listed. And they are broken down into some of the major decks and the major resources used. Um, there's decks for sketchy medical. There's decks for boards and beyond. Uh, there's anatomy decks. Um, many decks to choose from. So the decks that I used, I will recommend today. But just keep in mind that... You need to use whatever deck works best for you and for whatever you're trying to study for. So, like I said, all these decks are for step one. Some of them are for micro or pharmacology. Some of them are pathology. Some of them are pathophys. And it kind of depends on the resource used. So, obviously, the sketchy decks will be micro and farm. Um, the boards and beyond videos, uh, excuse me, the boards and beyond decks will be based off of the boards and beyond videos. Um, these are popular. Um, I use the Lightyear deck in conjunction with boards and beyond, and I liked it. Um, the Zonki is also a very popular deck to choose from. Um, it's one that I used, and I think it's a really great deck to use. There are some updated versions here. Um, I haven't used any of these. Um, they're probably fine. Just read through them and find out what um, has been added to them. But what I used was the original Zonki. So if you go ahead and click here, it will take you to the original posting of the Zonki deck. And the person that made Zonki wrote up a little bit about how he made the deck. And specifically, Zonki is broken into sub-decks. And he wrote a little description about how he created the sub-decks, which resources he used. So as you can see, uh, for the GI sub-deck, he used First Aid 2017, uh, Pathoma, and the Costanzo textbook. And for other sub-decks, he used different resources. He also has a pharmacology deck, which is based off of mostly first aid and sketchy. Um, so overall, I mean, I think this is a great deck to use. I used it, um, and it's a very popular one. So as of the recording of this video, these two links do not work. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, as you can see, this is an old post. It was first made three years ago. So, 
these two links here, as of recording this video, these two do work. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to download this deck by using these links. So go ahead and click on one, and just keep in mind, guys, I'm using Zonkey as an example. Please choose whatever deck you feel like will work best for you. Okay, so it takes me to the Anki website. Gives me a little bit of description of how the decks are made, how the cards are laid out. Um, so you can read a little bit about that. Uh, it's also written on Reddit in his write-up. But go ahead and click on download here. Um, and keep in mind, when you do, it will take a while. This is a very large deck, so it will take some time to download. Okay, so now that you have your decks downloaded, you want to go ahead and go back into your Anki app and come over here in the top left corner and click on File. Okay, and you're want, gonna want to go to Import, click here, and find the folder where your flashcards are downloaded and go ahead and click on the deck that you want to import into your Anki app. As you can see, I have many decks here. Um, all of these are already imported into my app, but what you want to do is just go ahead and click on one and import it. Okay, so once your decks have been imported into Anki, you will see them listed here like I have mine listed as well. So the first thing you're wanting, gonna wanna do is click on browse right here. This will open up the deck browser. And you will see your decks and sub decks listed over here on the side. And they will also be listed uh, by tag, which we can talk about a little bit later. But first, what you want to do is click on whole collection and as you can see many of my cards are in yellow with a parenthesis around the due date what that means is these cards have been suspended that means that they are not active cards for learning at this moment so what you guys will need to do is go ahead and click anywhere in your whole collection if your cards are not suspended if these, if your cards are not yellow like mine are, if they look white and gray like this, you're going to want to go ahead and click anywhere and do Control A to select all your cards. Okay, there we go. Now right click anywhere and you're going to want to hit Toggle Suspend. We want to suspend all of our cards so that they are all in yellow. Now, obviously, I'm not going to do that on mine uh, because I am still working on my cards. But go ahead and hit Toggle Suspend to suspend all of your cards so that they are all in yellow. Okay, so once we have them all suspended, uh, back on the main page, you should notice that you do not have any cards due over here uh, like I do. No due cards and no new cards. Okay, that will be important for getting started with Anki. So now let's go back to the browser and let's look over here on the left side. You will see your decks. Now yours may look a little different than mine depending on which decks you chose to download. Now, I'm going to talk specifically about a couple of the decks that I used when I was studying for step one. So just keep in mind, if you choose different decks, um, you won't see the same decks that I have here. But you should be able to follow along and figure everything out um, for your decks as well. So first, I want to talk about LOL Not a Cop. This is Sketchy Micro, and you can see they are broken up here by subdeck. 
So if I specifically want to look at a DNA virus, I'm going to click the drop down arrow here. This would be after I watched a sketchy video, uh, say on EBV. I would go ahead and click on this subdeck and all of the cards available um, for that video would be listed here. Um, of course, I have already moved these cards over, um, so they're not they're not available here. Okay, but just for an example for you guys, um, let's choose another virus, uh, pox virus. Okay, so this is the browser view. These are all the cards that are available underneath the pox virus sub deck of the LOL not a cop deck. So once you've watched the pox virus video in sketchy, you can come over here and again, control A to select all of your cards and you can toggle suspend these and they will become available for you on the other page here. You will see them as new cards. They will be listed in blue over here on the LOL Not A Cop deck. So now that you have your decks imported, you will see them listed here uh, kind of like mine are. Uh, so the first thing that I want you to do is go ahead and go to any deck and click on this gear icon and then go to options. Okay, so what this is is a little bit of the algorithm and how the space repetition works with Anki. Um, and these settings are adjustable. So what I want you to pay attention to is that there's option groups. And what these option groups allow for is for certain decks of cards to operate off of one option group while another deck operates off of a different option group. But what I would recommend is just going ahead and um, making your changes to the default option group and then allowing all of your decks to run off of that same default option group. And we're going to make those changes um, now and I'll show you how to do that uh, so that you can get the most out of your Anki. So in this first text box here, we're under new cards where it says steps in minutes. I want you to type in one space 10. And then for the order, go ahead and just select show new cards in random order. And again, guys, these are my settings. Uh, you can feel free to make adjustments to them as you see fit. Uh, but this is what I found works for me. And for new cards per day, uh, just go ahead and type in 999. Um, basically, what we're telling Anki right here is that... Um, there's essentially no limit to new cards per day, um, but there's not an option for no limit, so we'll just type in uh, 999 uh, as our upper limit for that. Okay, so for graduating interval, we want one day. Our easy interval will be four days, and our starting ease will be 250%. Um, and go ahead and uncheck this very related new cards until the next day. Um, and go ahead and get those changes made and then we will go to the reviews tab. So for this maximum reviews per day go ahead and type in 9999. Uh, same idea as with the last page we just want to tell Anki there's no upper limit. Okay for easy bonus 130% interval mod modifier 100% maximum interval 90 days. Okay and the hard interval will be 120 and again uncheck this very related to reviews. Okay, for lapses we want to do 15 in the first text box, new interval 0%, minimum interval one day, leech threshold eight lapses, and leech action tag only. Okay, for general go ahead do 60 seconds and check automatically play audio and check always include question side when replaying audio. Um, and you can add a timer if you'd like. Again, these are my settings. Um, feel free to experiment and find what works best for you. 
okay? And you don't have to worry about this description tab. Okay, so when you're done making your changes, uh, go ahead and click OK. Okay, so what we have just done is we set up our spaced repetition algorithm. Um, what this tells Anki is how you want to view your cards and how often you want to see them based on how hard or how easy you thought the cards were. So for an example, I will go ahead and open up a deck that I'm currently working on and show you guys um, how those settings um, interact with the cards. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Family because I'm in Family Medicine right now. And I will click on Study Now. Okay, and so here's a card. This is an example of what a card will look like on PC. Um, this is a closed deletion card, as you can see here, and we will talk a little bit more about closed deletions in a little bit. Um, but once you've read the card and you decide that you think you know what the answer is, go ahead and click Show Answer. And the closed deletion will fill in with whatever the correct answer is. And this particular card has some things in the note section. Um, so it has a little bit of a note um, to give you a little bit more information about what the card is telling you. And it also has a picture, uh, which looks to be from first aid. Okay, so now depending on how hard or how easy you thought that card was, you have some options down here at the bottom. So if you absolutely did not know what that card was, you would go ahead and click again. That tells you that you will see the card in under 15 minutes. Um, it will go ahead and give it to you again on Key Roll. If you thought the card was okay, you can click hard. Um, it will show you in nine days. If you thought it was good, Anki will show it to you in 12 days. If you thought it was easy, Anki will show it to you in 16 days. And these intervals change as you view the card multiple times. So the first time you see the card, uh, the intervals will be a lot shorter. Okay, and just remember how space repetition works. The more you see the card, the farther out the intervals get. That's why um, my lowest interval is 9 days and my highest interval is 16 days. So the more times I see this card, um, the farther out Anki will push the card for me. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and click that and come back out to our decks. So I want to take this moment to talk a little bit about how I used Anki during years one and two of medical school. Um, specifically, I created two decks. One that I worked off of was my current deck, and the other that I worked off of was my review deck. What that meant was the current deck was material that I was studying for at that time for a particular test. So for instance, if I was in the cardio module and we were learning cardiology, I was studying for the cardiology test, I had one deck that contained all of the cardiology related cards, uh, whether it's pathophysiology, um, pharmacology, whatever it was, I moved all of those cards from the decks that they were in and I placed them in one current deck and I studied off of that deck until I took the test. And then after I had taken the test and moved on to another module, I then took those cards from the current deck and I put them into a review deck. In fact, you can see those decks here, current and review. Now, that is only one option for using Anki. It's one that I liked. Um, you can also just leave the cards where they are and study all of the material at once from the decks that they are originally in. Uh, and what I mean is like these decks here, like LOL Not a Cop, On King, uh, Zonki, all these decks. You can leave the cards there and you can study from them there. Um, many people did that. It really doesn't matter, just find a way that works best for you. But I'm going to go ahead and show you guys 
um, how to make a deck and how to move cards into that deck um, if you want to study that way. Okay, so what you want to do is come down here to the bottom and click Create Deck. And then you want to make a name for your deck. And then click OK. And you can see my new deck is now here. Okay, it is as simple as that, making the deck. Now I'm going to show you how to move cards over into that deck. So come over here to Browse. Okay, so now that we're in the browser, this is the card browser in Anki. Over here on the left side of the screen, these are all the decks and subdecks and hierarchical tags that Anki that you have in your Anki. Okay, so whatever you downloaded off of Reddit will appear over here. And the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and click on this whole collection right here. And then if you look over here, your cards will most likely be this white color right here. You shouldn't have many yellow cards. And what that means is the yellow cards are suspended, meaning they're not in use at the moment. I'm not learning those cards at the moment. And the white or gray cards, those are cards that are being learned at the moment. So what you want to do is go ahead and click on any card and go ahead and hit Control A on your keyboard and what that will do is select all. It will select all of the cards. There you go. Okay, and now right click anywhere. Come over here to where it says toggle suspend and you'll want to go ahead and click that so that all of your cards appear yellow. Okay, you want all of your cards to be yellow in the suspended state to get started anyway. Okay, so say you have got, went ahead and made a current deck to study off of and you are studying with Sketchy and you've downloaded the LOL Not a Cop deck. You can see that over here. I want you to go ahead and click on this drop down arrow and you'll see all the sub decks in the LOL Not a Cop deck. So say for instance you watched a video on the pox virus. You will click here and this shows all the cards available for that sketchy video. So go ahead and click here anywhere in the pox virus deck. Go ahead and hit Control A to select all of your cards. Right click, go ahead and click on Change Deck, and you'll want to scroll down until you find your deck. And here's my new deck. Go ahead and click on New Deck, and then move those cards. As you can see, these cards are now in the new deck. Now while they're still highlighted, go ahead and right click, and hit toggle suspend. Okay, so now what that did was that unsuspended those cards. And if you recall, we suspended all of the other cards. So these cards will now be the only cards that you should have that are unsuspended because these are cards that you want to go ahead and start learning now. Okay, so if we close out of the browser, and go back to the main page, you'll see that your new deck, maybe you called it current deck, but it has cards in it. And these cards are in blue. What that means is these are new cards. So you haven't seen these cards before. You need to learn them. So go ahead and click on new deck. Click study now. And you will see your card. Okay, and you just watched your sketchy video, and now you're studying. And so, again, this is a closed deletion card, so it is asking pox virus is a linear enveloped blank in a virus. Okay, so if you think you know the answer, go ahead and click show answer. 
and the answer was double-stranded DNA virus. And it, go, it will go ahead and throw pictures in here from the sketchy to remind you that it's a DNA virus, makes their own envelopes, and there's even a picture here from first aid. So, depending on how difficult you thought the card was, you can choose to see it again in under one minute, again in under six minutes, again in under 10 minutes, or maybe you thought it was really easy and you don't want to see it for another four days. Uh, whatever you choose, um, just go ahead and select that and you will proceed to your next card. Okay, and down here, if you look, you see 10 blue cards. Now, what we said before was the blue cards means that these are cards that are new, you haven't reviewed them yet, you haven't seen them before. But now you have a card in red, and that's the card that we just did. The reason it's in red is because you're going to see it again today, because I chose to see it again in under 10 minutes, so I'm still learning it. That's what the red means. Okay, so now we can go back to the main screen by clicking Dex up at the top, and now we are back on the main screen. I'd like to go ahead and show you guys how to create cards. Um, like I said, I highly recommend using pre-made decks uh, available off of the internet. That's going to save you a lot of time in making cards. But maybe you have some lectures or in-house material that you don't have cards for. And if that's the case, then I want to go ahead and show you how to make cards on that material. So come up here to the top, click where it says add. Okay, and it's going to bring up this pop-up window uh, which allows you to make cards. Now, if you notice here, the deck that this new card is going in is my new deck that I made. The reason being is because I was highlighted on that deck when I clicked the add button. But if I wanted to change what deck that card went into, I'd just click here and choose another deck for the card to go into. Okay, and for type, this is referring to the type of card that I'm making. There are a lot to choose from. Um, I really like closed deletion cards. Um, and I'll go ahead and show you um, what I mean when I say closed deletion. So here in the text bar, you just want to go ahead and type, type in whatever you're learning, okay? And now with any card, there's a certain word or phrase that you are trying to remind yourself of. So whatever that is, go ahead and highlight. And right here where you see the brackets and the parentheses, go ahead and click there. and you will see it puts that word in these brackets and says C1. And what that's going to do is allow you to see these words, but not what's in brackets. So the idea that you're trying to, uh, the question you're trying to answer is whatever is in brackets here. Okay, and you can put multiple closed deletions into the same card and if you click here see this is closed one and closed two if you click here and go ahead and change that number you can add multiple closed deletions which are all closed at the same time or you can add closed deletions that are closed at different times so in this example right here if we left with a C1 and a C2, you would actually get two separate cards. One with this word deleted and another with this word deleted. Okay, But if we change that to the same number, both of these words would be deleted at the same time and you would be guessing both of these words simultaneously. Okay, And for the extras, this is where you will put your hints or additional information. Okay, so if we click add, that has added the cards to the deck. And now if we click 
from you. As you can see here is our card. This is the first one with the first closed deletion. And this is our second card with the second closed deletion. And you are guessing the word card in this case. And like I said, if we change those numbers so that it was C1 and C1, rather than C1 and C2, then both of those words would be deleted at the same time. You'd be guessing both of those words at the same time. Okay, so that is how you make your own card. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about how to make image occlusion cards. This is the third add-on that we discussed earlier. So to do that, you're going to come back over here to Add. Click here. And as you can see, we are in the closed type card. Let's go ahead and click here. I'm going to go for image occlusion. Enhanced is fine. Choose that. Okay. Now we are going to click here on our image. And it should pull in whatever image you have copied onto your clipboard. So for instance, I went ahead and copied an image of the brachial plexus onto the clipboard um, for an example for you guys. So over here on the left side of the screen, if you go ahead and click on this rectangle, that brings up the image occlusion option. So what you want to do is go ahead and drag it over whatever term it is you are trying to learn. Okay. And the option I like to use is hide one, guess one. Okay. So go ahead and click that and it will make your cards. And it will make three cards. As you can see right here, it went ahead and added three cards to the deck. Uh, and that is because I made three boxes and I chose for it to hide one at a time for me to guess. Okay, then you can exit out of here, exit here. It has made those cards for me over in the new deck. So if we go here, and here we have one of our cards. As you can see, the image conclusion that we added is here, and when we are ready to guess, we just click Show Answer, and it shows what was underneath the image occlusion. Okay, so that is how image occlusion cards work. Okay, so now we've talked briefly about um, how to make new decks, how to import decks, um, how to move cards from one deck to another, how to sub suspend and unsuspend, and how to make new cards. Um, I want to briefly go back to the browser um, just to show you guys um, a little bit more about how these cards are organized in the browser. As you can see, um, we've already talked a little bit about this LOL Not a Cop deck. This is the microbiology deck based off of Sketchy. Um, it is broken down into sub decks, which you can see here with the drop down arrows. And that's fairly straightforward to use. It's uh, based off of the sketchy videos. So each sub deck, sub deck correlates to a sketchy video. Zonkey is kind of broken down the same way into sub decks. Um, this is a little bit more on subject matter. So, for instance, there's a biochemistry subdeck, which is broken down into metabolism, molecular, cellular genetics. So, let's take, for instance, that you are in your biochemistry module and you are learning about glycolysis. Um, you'd want to go ahead and click on the biochemistry subdeck. And over here on the right, these are 
all of the cards that are available underneath the biochemistry subdeck. Now, some of these will be in the metabolism subdeck, some of these in this other subdeck, and some of them in the vitamin subdeck. But all of these are in the biochemistry Zinke subdeck. So you're learning about glycolysis. Go ahead and click up here on the top text bar. And everything that you see up here, just go ahead and leave that. But go ahead and hit your space bar and type in glycolysis and hit enter. This will do a search within the Zanke biochemistry subdeck for any cards that have glycolysis um, anywhere in the card. So it pulled up 29 cards for us. And since you're learning about glycolysis right now, go ahead and click anywhere. Do Control A, change deck. And this is optional. Um, you can move these cards into the new deck that you created for your current studying, or you can leave them where they are in the Zenki subdeck and unsuspend them and just study for, from them directly from that subdeck. Um, like I said, I separated my studying out into current material and review material. Um, but it really doesn't matter. So um, go ahead and move those cards into your new deck, suspend them, and now they are ready for you to study. So I also mentioned that some of these decks are organized rather than in subdecks, they are organized by tags. And that's where that hierarchical tags option, uh, the add-on, came into play. So if you come over here and scroll down, you will see now that we are no longer in the decks and subdecks, but we are now separated by tags. Okay. So what I want to talk about now in particular is the light year deck, um, which again I used in correlation with boards and beyond. So if you scroll all the way down, you will see BAB. -B. Okay, and then there is a drop down arrow. So if you're learning about cardiology, come here, you will see the arrhythmia section. Okay, action potentials are separated by tags. And what's different about tags is that these cards are tagged no matter which deck they are in. So if you noticed earlier, when we moved our cards to a different deck, we moved them out of the subdeck they were in and into a different deck. These cards I have already moved into, at one point they were in my current deck, they are now in my review deck, um, but if you notice, they are still listed over here under uh, Boards and Beyond, Cardiology, Arrhythmias, and Action. That is because they are tagged. They are over here because they, are, they have these, these tags. They're still in my review deck, um, but they are tagged over here. So that may or may not be important to you. Um, it shouldn't really change your study habits, but that's just a little bit of um, how Anki works um, in case you get confused on that later. Okay, so let's go back to the main page for now and we'll do that since 
once we are in the browser, we will go ahead and click on the exit button up in the top right corner. Okay, and now we are back on the main page. Okay, so now I want to show you guys how to use Anki on your phone or tablet. And so to do that, uh, since we've made some changes here on the computer, we want to go ahead and sync those changes uh, so that we'll see them on our phones as well. Okay, so we'll go ahead and click sync up here on the top right. It'll take just a moment to sync those changes to your web account. And now I'm just going to share the screen on my phone here. Um, as you see, we need to sync over here as well. So I'll go ahead and click the sync button. And I'll give it a moment to sync on my phone. Okay. And now we are ready to start using Anki on our phone. So I'll go ahead and open up the Family Medicine deck and we will look at a card. As you can see, very similar to what you see on the computer. Again, with four options and four different intervals uh, for when you will see that card again. And when you are done, you just hit sync right back up here. And that will save your progress across all of your devices. So guys, that, that is about it. I th think at this point, uh, you just need to start practicing with Anki. Uh, start playing around with it. Start, start unlocking cards. Start studying with it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to, to let me know, and I'll do my best to answer them. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope Anki may makes a little bit, bit more sense now, and I hope that you will be able to use it, and I hope that it, it helps you greatly.